Hi, I'm Jenny Fish from One Big Happy Yarn Company. And I'm Jenny Joan from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. And today we're going to start knitting our One Big Happy Cow. Yay, Soft we get to start. I'm so excited about this. If you still need supplies, be sure to check the description box below or go to OneBigHappy.com. That's awesome. In our last video, we talked about everything we needed, right? So if you missed it, be sure and watch it. Uh, we'll link to that down below. Now let's get to knitting. Oh, let's get to it. The first thing we're going to do is learn how to cast on. Do you know so, that's one of the things I always forget? I always forget. I yeah, when I when I haven't knitted for a while, I'm like, how do I do this? So this will be great out. to have a video to go back to. Absolutely. This is going to show you how to get this yarn onto this needle so you can make a stitch. <laughs> Perfect. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. First, we got to open our ball. All right. It's kind of like opening a jelly roll, except for it yeah. doesn't fall apart. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Take your label out. Right. And you want to find. Sometimes you have to dig inside and then. Um, Make sure that when you pull it out, you have one. Like mine is straight. coming right out of the center perfectly. And mine is not, so that's okay. All right, this you'll, is find learning it. Experience. you'll find it. You kind of dig down inside and find that loose thread. Or now, would it hurt if you did it from the outside? Not no. at all. Okay. No, I just. This keeps... just keeps it from tangling less. Mm -hmm. Okay, I get that. I get that. All right, so now what do we do? Okay, we will need to determine um, where to start and where you start by putting in a slip knot. So determine where you're gonna put in your slip knot. You look how at your pattern. How much tail do you need? I will show you. Take All right. your knitting needle. Okay, got my knitting needle. And this is 17 stitches. So you're gonna wrap around 17 times. Oh. One, two. I don't know this. Three, four, hold five, it tight. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, Oh, no, it all, mine all just came off. You can tell I'm a beginner. Oh, wait, on my needle. <laughs> Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, Perfect. 16, 17. Awesome. 17 winds. Okay, now hold that spot. Okay. Pull them off the needle. <gasps> Because each one of those wrap around the, the needle represents a stitch, basically. So that way it gives you an idea of where to start. Why do you need your this project. long tail? It's called a long tail cast on. <laughs> oh. Now give right yourself then. about another inch or two. Okay. Move up. And now we're gonna make a slip knot. Okay. You remember how to make a slip knot? I do. Okay. You go around, make a loop, stick your fingers through, grab. And you grab the yarn that's the piece that's coming from here, not the tail. At this point, it doesn't matter either way because okay. we're going to um, twist it towards us. We want the tail towards our body. Okay, I got my tail towards my body. And this is body. called our working yarn. The, the yarn coming out of your yarn ball is called okay. the working yarn. So we're going to set that over there. Insert your needle into the tail mm -hmm. or into the loop. Yep, I got mine. You got your tail towards your body. Yep. You're gonna snug it up against your needle. Okay. And then to do the cast on, it's kind of, it's kind of like a slingshot. Oh, okay, wait. Well, not Hang that on. kind of slingshot. <laughs> <laughs> not that kind of slingshot. All right, I'm back, I'm okay. back in, I'm back in the game. Okay, you got this towards your body? I got this towards my body. Okay. You're gonna stick your fingers through. You gotta okay. switch hands. I do? Yeah. But I'm left-handed. That's the great thing about knitting, is you use both hands. Okay. So okay. we're going to start off with this in our right hand. Okay, perfect. Thank you. We're going to stick our fingers through and make this V shape. Just like, like this. This? Mm hmm And then you're going to... Wait, I feel like my V is... Hold these down here. With, with your pinky and your ring finger, you're going to hold the two tails down here. Okay, I got Yep, you got it. I got those. Okay, so we tails. got our slingshot. Yeah. We're gonna scoop. Oh, your thumb? Yep. Through your thumb. And then you're gonna scoop this one. Okay, like that? Uh-huh. And you're gonna bring it through. I have never cast on go. like that. A okay. whole extra loop there. A whole new world. No, I just have two. See, I just okay. there you go. So let's see. So we're gonna go. And you might want to do it a little closer to the tip of your needle. Okay. There you go. Okay. So you go around here. Under my thumb. And. Around there. Around there. And. Let's no. try that again. <laughs> that did not work. <laughs> All right, so I'm putting in here, making the V, mm -hmm. holding, holding these two. Yep. 
And then I go under this under, thumb. Mm -hmm. And around. And go in through here like uh -huh. this. Uh -huh. And then you pull, this is where you're coming through. You're letting go too soon. So let's go back and try that again. Okay. So you got your tail. And I'm going to do a little trick here and put a slip knot in your tail. Because sometimes these two get confused and you'll grab the wrong one. Oh, okay. So if you have that little knot there, you kind of like feel I know, it. I know that it's... And, we're gonna, and we'll pull it out when we get closer to the end. But okay. I'm just going to put it there. All right. So I've, I've got my V. Mm -hmm. And... You slingshot back. Slingshot back. And then you grab around here. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. Yep. Okay, so hit this way. And then Okay, scoop. so you go this way. Uh-huh. And then scoop up the one on your pointing finger. And then scoop this way. And then through. And through where? In through, back through okay. where your thumb is. So you're letting it fling off of okay. your thumb Okay, let me do first. it one more time. Yeah. See you guys? <laughs> See? All right, so we go this way. Uh-huh. And scoop then this around. way. And then back through here. Yep. <gasps> and then you let go. Then I let go. There you go. You got it. Woo. So All right. we need to do this 17 times. Only 17 more times. All right, here and we go. And you do count we your go. slip knot as your first stitch. And so I'm here. I'm mm -hmm. so that way. I'm through here, and mm -hmm. then I come back through. Yep. <gasps> I, may, I may be able to there you go. do this after. Wait, maybe. Maybe I spoke too soon. Nope, you've got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm here, and through here, uh -huh. and back through. I don't even, yep. I don't know which one. Do you pull the slip knot? Yeah, the one that's closest to your oh, body. Oh, I'm trying to pull the other one. Okay. So what do I have? One, two, three, four, five. Make my, wait a minute. Make my B. Through here, around here, through there. I'm so, there you go. I'm so fast now. <laughs> You've got it. Through here, around there, back through. Yep. Seven. Oh, so that's why it's you slip on the tail. That's why your tail has to be this long. Yes, because okay. that's what's making the loops that's what's making around the loops. your needle. All right, so that is different than anything I've ever done. But it's soup. Once you get the hang of it, it's super cool. Does does is all casting on the same? Are there other ways to cast there on? There are several different ways to cast on for okay. this particular pattern. And and when you're reading patterns, you always look at what the pattern writer has suggested for a cast on and okay. if they haven't suggested one then you can use whichever one you prefer okay and we'll have we'll have videos to show all the different cast on oh that's a great idea yeah that's a great idea so that would be super helpful quick reference for that all right this so is here. the most common yeah. i think in my personal opinion the one i see the most is the long tail cast on mm -hmm. all right so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen 15, 16, 17. Now that this loop right here appears to be a right. little bigger. Something's wrong. Let's it's just take... it's just big. I didn't pull it as tight. Oh, okay. Do you want me to do you want me to take those two off and do them again? All right. Is so yeah. uniformity is important then? Yes. And okay. make sure you've got your tail towards your body. My tail. All there right. you go. Um, and then we're going under here, around here, and through there. So see how somehow this one just he wants to be a big loop. Well and in this yarn, sometimes you have little bulky areas too. Yeah. The way this yarn is All made. Right. So I have 17 now. Look how beautiful that is. It's gorgeous. I can cast on. I can cast on everybody. And I didn't even have to like bait a hook. <laughs> Isn't that the best? <laughs> right? All right. I love so it. now next step after casting on. Then we're going Oh, do we spread them like that? I do, it, and that's just Yours kind of is my, so pretty. Look at that pretty My yarn. habit, I kind of stretch it out, make sure all of my stitches look like they're about the same in size. Okay. And then you flip it around. All right, take it in this hand. And now we're going to pull out a little bit from our ball. All right. And this also, too, is where I will put another slip knot in okay. my tail. Just to remind you that don't knit, don't knit this. Absolutely, you'll feel it, and you okay. won't pick up the wrong strand of yarn okay. when you're going Slip to knit your further. second row. There we go. All right, perfect. So now we've got the cast on, and that is a long tail cast on. So want to start the knit stitch? Yeah. Okay. So let me move this out of there. Okay. You take your working needle. You put it through the loop. Okay. To the back of the needle? The front. I mean, my new needle oh, goes to the back? Your new needle, yes. Okay. 
Then you take your working yarn, the one that's attached to your ball, okay. counterclockwise around the tip of your so needle. this way. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you kind of hold it. I hold it between my ring finger and my middle finger. I hold the working yarn. Okay. Does it matter? No, I don't want to do that. That I did that. You do this in crochet, crochet I think, <laughs> but that didn't feel right with the yarn. It, it and can? you want to do, some people that have a history of crochet, they will hold their yarn that way. Mm -hmm. um, it's just keeping it the same tension. tension. Okay. Mm -hmm. And find what Quilters works. Quilters understand tension. We Absolutely. do. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you want to find what works best for you and okay. what feels comfortable. Some people wrap around oh. their pinky. For me, <laughs> One moment, slippers. please. All right. For I'm me, back. I like to hold it between these two fingers. Okay. That's just my comfort I'll zone. try it. And then you, because you've already wrapped it counterclockwise. And then I grab my needle and bring it down. And you catch and that little loop. Pop up. Yep. Yeah. And then you flick it off the end. Okay. Take it off. Uh -huh. There we go. And then you go to your next one. And you put your needle behind. Mm -hmm. Counterclockwise. Then... Bring it back and then flick it off the end of the other needle. Okay. And you do this over and over and over. Wait, wait, wait. I, I've barely done three. I can't. Oh, you mean over and over. Do all the stitches. All right. <laughs> I got you. I got you. I'm like, wait, we're doing something else. <laughs> this Sorry. is really the only stitch that you need to do to make this whole cow. Oh, that is so awesome. And you do it on both sides. So we are going to get really good at this stitch. Yes. That is awesome. All right, here we go. And you do it for... Um, now, do you have to bite your lip when you do this? You know, like... Just wiggle your tongue a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody has their <laughs> different concentrating faces. <laughs> And a lot of times beginner, beginning knitters really tug tight on their yarn. Yeah, don't tug tight. Just keep an even so that it's slot. You want to check and make sure that it's sliding on your needle. Okay. Well, these, um, these needles are, uh, I like that they have, they have they, they feel slippery. You know, they feel like they can, you know. Yeah, this the yarn, yarn slides easily on it. That's what I'm trying to say. This yarn has a little bit of a grip to it. So by having the metal needles, it is sliding. Now, if you do find that you're having too much slipperiness, you can check out some maybe bamboo needles or another, um, which another I'm material sure for the, the one tips. big yarn company dot com will have. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Now this. Oh, this is this is two. I'm trying to do two. I thought this was my last one, but it looks like I have another stitch there. Yep, you got two left. And I would imagine that um, it would be important to count to make sure you still have the same number, right? Yes. Throughout so, your project, you want to just kind of go back and double check to make sure that you look, have... Look how beautiful that is. It I is did gorgeous. a row. Let me count. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Perfect. Now, what would have happened if I picked up two? Well, if you picked up two... And I didn't notice. And you didn't notice, you want to go back and try to figure out where that mistake happened. Mm -hmm. And you can rip it back to that. Or you if, can just pretend it's like... This yarn is so forgiving that if okay. that happens, there's yay, ways around yay. it. All right, you okay. Can, you can make some little That's changes. That's what I wanted to hear. Like, <laughs> like what, you know, what if I don't discover it till I'm like this far? You know, then it's like... Okay, and well, it, it's probably not going to show, yeah. Yeah, when you look at this, the bumps and stuff, you could easily fix fix it. All right, awesome. And not Perfect. See it. All right, so how do I know that my stitches are the same size? We I mean, need do to we have to do a few more rows? Through, yeah, we need okay. to do a few more rows, and then we'll dive into it. All right, so needle behind. Now, this is kind of a loosely woven yarn. It does have that little thread that runs through it. But is it possible that like you could pick up half the yarn and then double your stitch? That is very possible. That's called splitting your oh, thread. Oh, splitting. Okay. Like if you could go through, if you, sometimes when you grab it, you'll just go through your yarn. And um, you just want to pull those stitches out when you catch it. If you don't catch it, then we can fix it later on. You know what's interesting is that this is actually the only knitting stitch I've ever known and so but I haven't knitted in such a long time I was like a little terrified to come on and do this but you talked about yarn memory and hand memory and all of a sudden I'm like oh I can do this you know all of a sudden I find 
I'm Your finding myself relaxing. I've got my yarn between my fingers the way I like it. Mine is between this little guy. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, and it's coming back to me. So there is a memory uh, involved in that. There is. Let's work on this a little bit longer and then we'll come back. Awesome, see you back in a bit. All right, so look where we are. We're doing so good. I've got a few more rows done. I'm finishing up this row. Aren't you so proud of me? I'm very proud of you. You've <laughs> look done at this. great. All right, so Jenny, I'm knitting along and I have a bunch of rows, but I this came off my needle and I am not sure what I've done here. Okay, what we have here is called a drop stitch. It happens all the time. Yeah. And I will show you how to fix that. We're gonna use a crochet hook. Okay. Just a simple crochet hook. Like I haven't ruined the whole thing? Not at all. <laughs> okay. We can fix this super simple, <laughs> super right. simple. Okay, so we have our hole here. What we need to do is mimic the stitches that were there before. Okay. And so by doing that, we're gonna grab. Oh, okay. Just pull that through. Now the next one needs to come in front because now we'd be knitting on the opposite side of our work. Oh, so instead of flipping right, it over, that makes sense. we're just gonna grab this in front, stick the needle through the loop, grab the yarn, and pull it through. And, pull it through. and then we're gonna stick it back on our knitting needle. And you've got your working yarn on this side. Push that over. Can't even tell where. Oh my it gosh, that's perfect. Fell yeah. Through. So now you can so just. So that, that is just perfect. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, so while now, we're here, let's go ahead. Oh, did you have a question? Well, no, I was just going to finish my row. You want to go ahead and finish your row, and then I'll get the tape measure, and we will go ahead and check your gauge to see if you're on point for Ooh. what the pattern is calling for, oh, so okay. we can make so, sure we're... So the gauge, then explain the gauge to me while I'm finishing this. Absolutely. It is your tension as a knitter, and when a pattern writer, let's see, Tension is everybody's like fingerprint, is every knitter's fingerprint. And I imagine it's all a little different. It is. And so we have to adjust our needles to according to what our pattern writer's gauge is. Okay. Um, so for this pattern, they use a size 15. We used a size 15 when we wrote the pattern and we knitted it out and then we measured how many stitches did we get in four inches. And that is our quote unquote gauge. Right. And so when anybody else is making this pattern, they're gonna knit a few inches over four because you need a good gauge of, or a good uh, measurement. And then you're gonna measure and you see, am I getting the same amount of stitches per inch that the pattern writer got? And if I'm not, if I have too many stitches in that four inch space, then I know that I need to go to a larger set of needles. Can, so you, just, can you just knit looser? You can, but it's it's not as consistent. Oh, interesting. Your okay. needle size keeps you your consistency. Okay. Okay, so if now, I have too many stitches. Every quilter has one of these. It's a little tape so measure. It is a cute little tape measure with this little sweater, but is there a actual gauge measuring tool other than a tape measure? There is, and okay. it's, um, it's a gauge check, and you can find it on One Big Happy's uh, website at OneBigHappy.com. Well, I'm glad you're gonna show me this way because I have a few tape measures at my disposal. <laughs> Absolutely, this is just a quick way, easy to throw in your project bag and take along with you. Now, if we have too many stitches, mm -hmm. we'll need to use a larger needle if we wanna acquire the same size that our pattern calls for. If we don't have enough, then we'll wanna to go to a size smaller. Okay. That'll give us more. So what we're measuring, is these bumps. Do you every, see these little every bumps little bump, yeah. Those little bumps are our stitches. Okay. And these rows are also, so the pattern writer has said we want 10 stitches per four inches. Okay. And we want 16 rows per four inches. Okay, let's see so how I did. Let's see how you did here. We've got four inches right here. All right, I'll hold on to this and one we've if you got, want to count. Let's use this here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, so I we did. have the magic number. Yeah, ten. Perfect. Now we're going to flip this way. And each one of these is a row. Okay, so does so it count for one or two? One's the front side, one's the back side. Okay, so, so it you counts just count as two. two. Okay. So we've got, let's see here, let's make sure we've got everything. We've got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, 
14, 16, right, right there. Right on the nose. On the floor. Right. So that's the big thing is you want to make sure that your project is laying flat. Okay. And that it's kind of where it's going to be relaxed. Your stitches are, you know, even. And that'll give you your best measurement. You are right on target for what the pattern writer has designed. Now, if say, say I wasn't on target. Say mm -hmm. my stitches, I had too many stitches. Um, if I just go ahead and keep knitting that, will it just be uh, end up a smaller cowl? Will I need more yarn? I mean, how they because they write for the amount of yarn to buy. Okay, so if my stitches were too small, I would probably need more yarn. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. All right. So that makes sense to me. I get that. Okay. Because you you would have to do a few more rows to get to the length that you want, which would take up more yarn. Okay. Um. All right. That makes sense. But in this project. Your gauge is really not that important because you're you're going back and forth. You're gonna finish when you get to the end of the yarn ball. Okay. You only need about this much left at and the end. And it's either of the yarn a cowl ball. or a turtleneck, right? <laughs> Could be one of the two. Absolutely. <laughs> but when you get, you know, when you get this to yarn the is end, pretty forgiving, isn't it? It is. It is. It absolutely is. Now that you know how to check your gauge and fix any mishaps along the way, just keep knitting. You'll reach 90 rows. Next time I'll show you how to bind off, block, and finish your cowl. Ooh, I can't wait. Until then, happy knitting. And remember, hit the subscribe button below so you won't miss anything, and click the bell to be notified every time we have a new video. I already did that. <laughs> <laughs>